Good afternoon. So we're going to say hello. Say hello. Hello. All right, because I don't like to be here alone, right? So we're going to play together, because we all hang out. So my name is Kishiti Kiyawaka, the Whispering Sun Teaching Lodge. And before I begin, um, I want to honor all of you who have been here before. How many people here have heard me talk before? Could you stand up for me, please? If you don't mind. You've heard me talk before. Stand up. Thank you. You've heard me talk more than once. Put up your hand. Thank you. I, again, if you just give these people a lovely hand. Everybody thinks you do this by yourself. So I'm celebrating 35 years of being a shaman and an elder this year. And I don't usually talk about that, but you know, apparently now it's my thing. Um, and I tell you that because I didn't get here by myself. And when I ask the people in this room to stand up if they've been here before, um, it's because they keep coming back. And they keep me alive because they keep showing me that the work that I'm doing has meaning to them. And that I've impacted their life in, small, in a small way. And that's what the work is about. That is what shamanic energy medicine is about. And there's a lot of different modalities in the world, but shamanic energy medicine comes from the highest of highest vibration. And we're going to talk about that today. But again, in order for us to receive that vibration, we have to have others who will gather in our name. So we say whenever more, two or more gather in our name, then we create a very strong, powerful conduit. And this is a significant teaching. What can happen in that teaching is we can go powerfully positive as a collective, or we could go positively, we could go very powerfully negative as a collective. And I think as we look at our culture, we, we, we know what it looks like when we go powerfully negative, right? And so the work that we do, each and every one of us as an individual, is very significant. The work that we do collectively, hopefully as we grow as individuals. Because as we grow as individuals, then maybe we share our karmic um, limitations and we can be more honoring and respectful to each other. And maybe we can make the circles bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I have a lot of students of mine who are actually, um, some of them are upstairs and have their own booths uh, and are now doing their own work. Circles within circles. But we always want to honor where we come from because that's kind of an important place. So I honor those who have been here before with me. I honor all of you, and we honor the Great Mother Goddess, and we honor Great Spirit. So we just close our eyes for a minute now as we take deep breaths, as we imagine a gold and liquid light speckled with the many colors of the rainbow, as we draw that effortlessly into our heads, our necks, our shoulders, our arms, our hands and fingertips, the upper and lower back, the chest, the stomach, the abdomen, into your thighs, your knees, your limbs, your feet. Out through the bottoms of your feet and into the center of the earth. And as you continue to breathe in deeply now, just with me, let us sing our names three times.
I trust. I trust. And I surrender. I surrender. And as you breathe in deeply now, breathe in the color that you are in this moment in time. As you close your eyes with deep breath, deep inhalations, we don't breathe enough. And as you draw that energy through the top of your head and through the bottoms of your feet, as you listen to the sound of my voice for a few moments. Yeah, boy. Telling ourselves, this is 
what we're going to talk about today, that we are our emotions. We keep telling ourselves that. And yet, according to energy medicine, which is a science unto itself, my spirituality aside, um, you know, in energy medicine, we actually know one of the most major uh, protocols of energy medicine is I am not my emotion. You see what's going on there, right? And so we perceive that we are our emotion. And that is part of our challenge. Um, because how many people here like to feel their emotions? Yeah. Everyone should, if you want to be well, everyone should have their hands up and be dancing, okay? Because <laughs> that's actually why you incarnated. Thank you very much, um, Michelle. Okay, so we're going to talk a few, about a few things. But it's, the lights are still too bright. So thank you very much for your wisdom. Okay. So I just thought he was like, ooh, I'm <laughs> so sorry about that guy. So we're going to, I don't know if we can turn that one off. Let's hope we don't get a screechy thing. Put your hands over here. Are you there? Are you there? Excellent. Okay. Because we'll probably do this one better. So this is Grandmother Twyla, the Seneca Wolfman, who is my elder and my grandmother. And most of my teachings are based on her teachings that are, we call this the foundation of truth. In this time that we live in, it is very important that we find good teachers, okay? And if we are not with me or someone else, it's important that you understand that they have lineage. If you have a lineage and you have elders, then they are someone that you want to study with. And elders are peacemakers, and el elders honor where they've come from, and elders honor peacemakers from all traditions and all, trad all understandings. So it's a very important teaching, um, the peacemaker. Oh, there we go. Music. And so, Grandmother Twyla is the woman who gave me my name, Kishitikewak, which means dream daughter. Um, and the, my eldership was consecrated, as I think it was mentioned in the opening remarks, in 2011. And I am known as the messenger of the mother because I speak directly to the sacred feminine vibration. And it's through vibration, then through image which I'm going to be you know, I'm teaching you today, and then it comes through first in an energetic way. This is where, where the creation story works, is that you are given, it's like the internet, where you download, the mother wants to download wisdom into you. What do you guys need to be open to doing? Receiving it, yes. Let's do that together. What do you guys need to be open to doing? Receiving it. Let's do it again. Receiving it. Okay, because that's kind of a big problem on the planet, right? So that is why I'm called Kishiti Kiwak and the Messenger of Mother, in case you guys are interested. And these are some of the great people who hang out with me. I told you about them. Um, this is me actually at my eldership. Um, and this is at our Equinox teaching that we've been holding for only 30 years. I just have to keep saying that to shock myself. And so when we talk about shamanic archetypal energy medicine, we always want to go back to what Norman Sheely said. He worked with Carolyn Mice um, before anyone knew him. And Norman Sheely was one of the very first doctors in the United States to talk about alternative medicine and almost lost his medical license. So these are those who have come before us. And Norman said, e energy medicine is the future of medicine. I say everything is energy, everything is frequency. And so energy medicine is the grandmother to all the dis disciplines that you see upstairs. Just so we get, what is energy medicine? Energy medicine is the grandmother to all of the disciplines that are upstairs. I like energy psychology, homeopathy, Reiki, Reiki, Chinese medicine, shamanic, tribal wisdom, you get the drift, turbolism. Okay, so it's kind of an important thing to put in your little head and think about that for the rest of your life, okay? And, you know, I'm happy to talk to you about it after our talk, which unfortunately is only an hour. So these are the guiding principles. This is our lake in the Madawaska Valley where we do 50% of our, our teachings. Uh, but these to us are the guiding principles, is that they are indigenous teachings, the energy medicine teachings. But they are also indigenous because you are all part of what we call the Earth tribe. And so even those of you who are Anglo-Saxons or you know you come from different areas, all of our lineages can be traced back to a tribal reality. Because you all live at one point in a closer relationship with the Earth. And there are many tribes within tribes. What is most significant is the indigenous people 
of this world that we live in now have been courageously holding on to something and others have been so completely dishonoring and disrespectful to it. But we as a collective, when we talk about energy medicine, need to start recognizing that we need to change the way we're seeing things. And part of that, the mother would really like us all to get on board is starting to notice that we all have teachings and that we all have a contribution and that we are all part of the new tribe. Whoops. There we go. And so for us, when we talk about energy medicine protocols, there are two guiding principles in the energy medicine protocol. And that is the sacred feminine, and that's the picture that everybody knows me from, vitality, and I put that up there because I don't even think it's me anymore. It's more the mother, right? Because it has an energy to it. And that's an archetype, right? Archetypes are Nelson Mandela, Merlin, we have here, right? But these are the two guiding principles of our universe, is the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine. And no matter how you slice it and you dice it, that's what the universe is made. It doesn't mean that men are less. It doesn't mean that women are more important. Because when we talk about the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine, we're not actually talking about gender. Did we get that? Let's do it again. Right? We're not talking about gender. So if you heard me, could you put up your hand? All right, I see, I knew you guys are so clever. So we'll just keep moving on here, okay? Maybe we'll get another meditation in. Would we like that, do another yeah, meditation? Yeah. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through this really, really quickly. We're gonna try and get another meditation in, and then if you need to talk to me, you know, I'm not with the booth or I'd psych it afterwards, because we want to honor other people, and I always, I'm made of, you know, we always go late, because, you know, no watch, sorry. <laughs> so I need someone to give me a 10 minutes. Who's doing my butterfly woman? You know, dance, because I barely can see you, okay? All right, here we go. And so in the tribal shamanic tradition, we say that the sacred, these are some of the archetypes of the sacred feminine. So it's the moon, the water, the earth, the sacred masculine is the sun, the fire, and the air, okay? So these are just aspects, right? But what do we notice about these? There's no two-legged energy attached to them, so we can't give it a personality, project our stuff on it. Okay, you might be afraid of water. <laughs> okay, you might be afraid of fire. That's, you know, we'll keep working it, right? But this is the thing that you want to remember about archetypal vibrational medicine, is you always want to go for what we call the high as a five, right? And so when we're talking about the sacred feminine, it doesn't matter if you have issues with your mother, you know, you want to be moving, bringing the energy of the moon in. Do you feel that you want to have a greater sense of being stronger and more yang energy in your life? Then what could you be doing? You could be bringing in the energy of the sun. Now I know, this is where you know to put your hand on your heart for me, please. And do this. <gasps> it's free and it's too easy. I know. <laughs> but this is actually how archetypal shamanic medicine works image, bringing it into your body, learning to imprint it, right? And learning not to use your head in this process at all other than, I need more yang energy today and I'm going to bring that energy into my body. Your head is often what? Yes, it's a troublesome situation. <laughs> I just want to say that. And the less most of you think what? The better. <laughs> And if you can learn not to think around the time when you need to think, then God will actually give you something worthwhile to what? Think about it. So that was a little process there. I know some of you got it. So these are the archetypes of shamanic medicine. And so for us, we go back to the original intention, which is the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine, which in shamanic tribal tradition is the sun and the moon, or the moon and the sun. And so if you want to connect, more to the sacred feminine, then I highly encourage you to be bringing the moon into your body. If you want to connect to the sacred masculine, I highly encourage you to bring the sun into your body. Now you will note we have skipped religion here. <laughs> you, will, you will note that we have skipped all two-legged realities. And my, my goal, whenever the two-legged grasp onto something and they think they know, we throw that away in our lodge and look for something new. that are going to be limiting, right? We always want to serve the highest of highs. And so we're changing our archetypes all the time because we're changing. And that is the energy of the sacred feminine. The sacred feminine 
and asking you to change what? All the time. And how do you feel about that? Let's do our feeling. How do I feel about being asked to change all the time? Who wants to answer that question for me? Yes. I feel good and afraid. Excellent. I feel good and afraid was the answer, and that's the right answer. Because it's always going to be what? A little bit of both. So we honor the moon, we honor the sun, and we also ask in energy medicine, we always ask for the highest of highs. And in our tradition, we always ask, no matter what you're doing in meditation, work with a friend, any, anyone who thinks they're doing energy medicine, you need always to ask for divine protection, divine guidance, and divine intervention. And we always ask for divine intervention because we live on the planet of choice. And if you do not ask the divine to intervene on your behalf, they won't. They actually perceive that you're supposed to figure it out and that you are responsible. Yes, so if you give all of your power to God, fix me, please. Right? When you give your power away, then you lose it. So creator would never want you to take your, take your power away from you. And so you have it. You don't exercise it. And that's what divine intervention is about. It's asking for creator to intervene when you're not paying attention. So the foundation of all sustainable conversation includes honor and respect, non-judgment, gratitude, radical trust, the right to choice, unconditional love and acceptance, and responsibility to thrive. I often will discuss this in length. I am not discussing that in length today. I'm happy to discuss that at the booth if some of you need to. Um, today our focus is on the right to choice. So we have the physical, mental, and emotional and spiritual bodies. We understand that the moon, this is an example of archetypally, this is the Sleeping Beauty Mountain, which is in the Isle of Lewis. It honors the 18 and a half year cycle of the moon, which is also known as the wisdom of the mother. And so this particular circle is called the Kalanesh Stone Circle, and that mountain range that you see that they call Sleeping Beauty in the Kalanesh uh, complex, there's got to be at least maybe somewhere between 20 to 30 sacred sites that are orientated to that particular mountain range. I tell you this because this is one of the very few circles that are left, we'll be going there in May at Beltane, um, that are orientated to the moon and haven't been damaged. This we see the sun, this is the Earth Man with Moon Range, um, and at exactly one minute at, at the winter solstice, this is what you observe. It's a huge crystal mound, and exactly at that time, the sun, for three minutes, goes to a Triskelion um, in this huge earth map. So that, I am, I am sharing these things with you about the, the, the uh, sacred landscape of the Celtic and tribal people to show you how significant the sun-moon alignments actually are for you in your healing process and that our tribal elders and those who have come before knew this. So this, for example, is a 3,000-year-old um, birth man, okay? Kalanesh is just timeless. They can't date it. Okay, it's in the middle of nowhere, okay? Um, and it's been preserved amazingly because the people there um, practice a, a very or, um, strong, uh, I think it's the Church of Scotland, and so they don't, people who live there don't even go there because it's against their tradition. And so it's incredibly well preserved. And the alignment of all of the Celtic calendars and the moons and the significant alignments actually are through all of these sacred sites. But these are the two that we decided that we would share with you. And so we know also, for example, in archetypal medicine that we're not separate and that we also work with the standing ones. So for example, the stone people, the creature teachers, and also we look at the archetypes of the mother. So what are we saying? We imprint with trees. So for example, we have um, a song that we were given when we went to celebrate the festival of Bridget. This is Bridget in Ireland in the, in the well in Kildare. And when we celebrated with Bridget, we were given a song. And we're gonna sing one part of the song. And the song is, I am the oak tree. So do it with me. I am the oak tree. I am the oak tree, oh, set me free. And so that, again, is a way in which the standing ones are one of the most significant, you know, people on the earth. No one talks to them. I feel 
struggle sometimes, other than me. Um, but the oak tree teaches us to be strong. The pine in my tradition teaches us to be a peacemaker. Okay, the cedar is for healing. Okay, these are things archetypally like the moon and like the sun that you can actually be bringing into your physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional bodies and be strengthening yourself. If there are stones that you have, again, the stone people are the oldest people who live on the earth. They have seen more than you have. They know you better than you know yourself. Every incarnation that you have, you go back to the earth and the stone people remember you. And so when you can build a consciousness, the creature teachers as well. We have animal totems. And again, we've learned to bring the animal totems into our physical bodies. And so for in our tradition, we celebrate what we call the Celtic calendar. We talk about the eight portals. And again, sacred sites from around the world are aligned to the Celtic calendar. Again, we are not going to teach the calendar today, but we are going to reference it in, in terms of our talk, OK? Because it, the two things it, go together, and you can't separate them. And so here we have you know, the four um, holidays that most people know. Um, but what most people don't know is what we're going to talk about a little bit today is the point of conception. And the point of conception is one minute past uh, winter solstice. If you're writing anything down, I can send you stuff, so you don't need to panic. We can send you things, okay? Happy to. Um, but the point of conception is um, one minute after winter solstice, which we're moving towards, we enter into what we call the divine masculine cycle, right? One minute after summer solstice, we move into what we call the sacred feminine cycle. So remember our original archetypes that we're working with. And so we, in, in tribal uh, medicine, we can track that if you have mother issues, you're in them right now. If you feel that you've had any issues around expressing, you've had any issues around depression, and you've had any issues with women in the last six months, put up your hand for me and wake everyone else who's processing the same things you are. And what I want to say here is, all the dramas are the same, but the, all the issues are the same, but the way you drama end is going to be different. But every year at Winter Solstice, so I have everyone in my lodge, and I'm like, okay, we got all the new things we're doing, and we're getting everything going, and everyone's going, but we're tired, Kishida. And I'm like, <laughs> because I know one minute after Winter Solstice, we're going to get launched by the Mother Goddess, whether or not we're what? Ready or not. Because that's when we want to take our new teachings and our new patterns and the new things that we're doing in our community and we want to follow the sun, right? And we want to follow that sun cycle. And so any of you who are starting new situations in your life, this is what you want to remember. But when we're in the sacred feminine cycle, this seems to be the cycle people just don't seem to like as much. I don't get it. But, you know, we don't want to feel our feelings. We've been suppressing the sacred feminine for only 2,000 years. So, you know, it's a little karma we got that we're cleaning up around it, right? So that is where, again, we go back to I am not my feelings, okay? And the point of conception, the reason I'm talking to you about it, is the sacred masculine is I make a choice. Every time you make a choice, that is your sacred masculine. Say the sacred masculine is my choice. The sacred masculine is my choice. That is the yen. I choose a cigarette, I choose not to smoke. It's still what? It's a choice. So what are the choices that you're making? It's a very important thing to remember, particularly as the planet continues to evolve in higher frequencies. So for those of us who think we know, <laughs> you graduated to the next level and now Creator is now supporting you in one of the choices that you're making. And you better start what? making the ones that are more um, congruent with, what, with the wisdom that you profess to know. Remember the law of self responsibility that's on the card. Happy to discuss that not today because they didn't give me enough time. So the point of conception is very different. And so we want you to honor the natural world. And so the, archetype, the archetypal energy patterns of the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine are the teachings. The teachings never change. Women are still giving birth, okay? Men are very yang orientated. They like to get things done. We like that. I have a lot of yang, can you tell? I like to get stuff done. But I also am very intuitive. And so I'm both. 
You know, they say carry the pipe. I don't need to carry the pipe because the pipe represents the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine. And I have actually integrated what? Both of those things inside of me. So I don't need the pipe because what? I am the pipe. And you can be too. Right? That's the journey. So we apply directly to the sacred feminine, to the sacred masculine. We recognize that archetypal um, imagery is the way in which you can raise your vibrational expression and support you in your healing process. The big thing is going to be remembering that you are not your karmic overlay. So a karmic overlay is the collective belief system that we all hold together. So do we want to explore that just briefly? What's a collective karmic overlay? Sorry? Perhaps uh, I could say we're all here to learn together. We're all here to learn together? Well, that's true. <laughs> so nice. What we carry from or what we're creating. So. This is what a collective karmic overlay is. Women need to be married. There are still probably, you know, 75% of the planet still actually has that collective belief system, including, including most of the women. So I work with women all the time, and I work with men all the time, and what do you think the biggest challenge the mother and I have? Breaking up the dysfunction. Right? Because women are afraid to become powerful, because if they become powerful, what's going to happen to them? They're going to end up like me, with no partner. If you have no partner, then you are what? Sorry? There's something wrong with you. So I mean, I, I, I needle my married friends all the time. What, I didn't get invited to that, 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 that party that everybody had that was married? How come I didn't get invited? I could bring the dog. We could pretend I'm married to the dog, <laughs> right? <laughs> Did you see what just happened? So there is a, that's a collective overlay. A collective overlay is children should be seen but not heard. A collective overlay is a choice or a belief system. You're gonna ask me after it, this. Okay, it's a choice or a belief system that, you know, years ago we all thought the world was flat, but apparently it's not, right? So it's a collective belief. What does the karma mean? It's a collective belief that's causing harm. So when someone tells you, I don't have choice, or you don't have a choice, you have to do that, right? And you tell them what? I have choice, right? A collective karmic overlay will tell you what? No. You don't have choice. You don't make friends when you actually sometimes stand for truth. So it's an important thing to remember. I would much rather have three friends than 900 friends if the three friends I had were standing with me in truth and in consciousness. So the collective karmic overlays are all of the things that you have problems with year in, day in, day all the time that you really hope that no one else knows about, that everybody else is processing just with you, and these are the things that we are continually being asked to let go so that we can become the people that we truly are. I hope it is safe in this us. And so the collective choice to separate out into the patriarchal culture of the karmic overlay in judgment is the biggie, right? So whenever you're judging yourself, you're judging others, you're in the patriarchal karmic overlay. And although I know it's challenging not to judge, because then you judge yourself for judging, right? What I want to continue to say to you is remember you're not your feelings. Keep pushing your, I'm, I am judging myself, I am judging that person's hair, I am feeling insecure today. She's wearing lipstick and I'm not, <laughs> and I shade. <laughs> okay, so again, but, the lipstick's a nice shade, it's a compliment, it's still what? It's still a judgment. So I want to say, um, how do I want to say this? I appreciate your lipstick, okay? So can you hear energetically the difference, right? So every word you think and every word you say actually has a vibration and has a frequency. So let's say the word like, let's sing it together. Like, like. Now we're going to sing appreciate. 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 So if you felt
felt the difference in those two words, could you put up your hand for me? So that's the thing. How do I stay karmically out of the out of the energy? What is the language I'm using? I appreciate that this gentleman came. Thank you very much for being here, sir. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you, but I do not attach to you. I am more helpful to you if I am in my own energy. You are more helpful for everyone you love and yourself if you are in your own energy too. What are we the most afraid of? Losing? Losing our energy. Losing our energy? Okay. I think the most we're afraid of is our own power. We are afraid of ourselves, yes. Thank you very much. Okay? We're afraid of ourselves and that a lot of the time we don't really even know that we're afraid of who we are and who we're becoming. And so that's again part of our collective overlay. We all have a piece of the karma and how we choose to manifest it is very much an individual experience. So the emotional body is where a lot of this is taking place because this is where the sacred feminine wants to hang out with us. We're looking for expression when we talk about the emotional body. It's about energy and motion. And we say in our tradition that emotion is the sound of your soul moving you to your next destination. I just taught this huge workshop for Sawain, which is Halloween in our tradition at our retreat center. What I, how I want you to see this is how I was able to reflect it to my students. You want to keep your canoe moving. That's what the emotional body is about. You know, something happens and you what? You stop, right? You want to keep your emotional, you want to keep your process moving, right? It's not about they're a bad person, they're a good person. It's about how am I feeling? You know, so I have, I have a student of mine um, who is here and she's doing really well. How do I feel about that? I feel great because we teach from different places, but I named her, and every single person that she works with is, is touched by me, whether or not they what? No one or not. Okay, so again, it's emotion. Do I need everyone to know who I am? I'm relieved that I have students that are going out there in the world and doing other things, because I would much rather move to the retreat center and write books <laughs> and do more teaching. What do you guys think? That's a good idea, don't you think? It'd be a shame if we didn't get one book out. So again, the emotional body is what am I experiencing, right? And what is the soul did you incarnate for your experience? And so sound is the expression of the emotional body, and we see sound. Sound is somatic. Again, when we talk about energy medicine, it's an actual science, okay? Energy medicine is a science. One of the ways in which we can change our belief systems is through sound, and so we do this with triads in our community. So a triad is through sound, so we're going to do it together. E ka da, e ka da. You guys have to get louder. E ka da. E ka da. So I use that when I am thinking. Can you ever hear your radio? Your your mental body going over and over something. I use sound to stop my mental body, especially if I'm observing my mental body in a pattern that is not healthy for me. If I am blaming, if I am judging, if I am not in an honoring and respectful place, if I am in a pattern, then I am using sound to support me in expressing it and releasing it. And they say, we say somewhere between six to eight weeks if you're really working it. And so the, we use sound, breath, and color sets up the imprint of archetypal wisdom. And so the moon energy is how we can connect to the mother and the water and also the earth. But these are images. If you want to be more connected to the earth, what do you need to do? Imagine her coming into your body and imprinting it. We're told somewhere, it depends on who you talk to, somewhere between, I love the scientists, they're always correcting me, so somewhere between 70 and 90%, and then you can figure out who's right, we are made out of that much water. And so again, as we go forward, you know, we say that the sacred feminine is the receiving of the blessing. The blessing is our intuitive wisdom and gift. The blessing is the magic of the soul, and accepting of the blessing manifests the magic. So again, it's the decision, but if you make the decision that you're not worthy of receiving the blessing, if you make the decision that, oh, I don't know what it is, so I'm not bringing it in, 
I asked for divine protection, divine guidance, and divine intervention, but now I'm a critic. <laughs> and I decide, right? So if you can't make the choice to bring in the blessing, then you're stuck. Okay? Which is a great place to be. We can move that. No problem, right? Right? No problem. Stay with me. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. So we say that acceptance and choice is the sacred masculine, but the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine are never in conflict. Okay? And at the point of conception, which is choice, we manifest the sacred masculine as per the original intention. And so we just choose to bring in the sacred feminine, and it happens. It's a choice. We just make that choice. And if that's a hard choice to make, then what do you know? That's what you're working on. It's a difficult choice for me. I must have some emotion attached to that. I'm maybe not breathing in enough color. <laughs> maybe I'm not even what? <laughs> breathing. <laughs> okay? I would, everyone take a breath now. Big breaths for me. And exhale. Let's do it again. So we, we don't breathe enough. So we say the point of conception is the dance between the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine, the blessing and the choice, and the choice determines whether or not we are in balance with the blessing. We're not in balance with the blessing on this planet, but we're getting there, right? And so again, as we move forward, we know that we live in the, prophecy, the time of prophecy, and so that the return of the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine is a big part of our tribal teaching. You know, we honor the grandmothers and those who have come before us, but we also honor the sacred Merlins, the masculine, the sun king, the warrior, you know, the messengers, the twin gods, you know, the chieftain. We need that sacred masculine, and we need that sacred feminine, and we need to learn how to bring those two things together inside of us, and when we bring those things inside of ourselves, then we, when we enter into wholeness. When we enter into wholeness, then we know who we are, and it becomes a little bit more difficult to get new. Right? And that's what we're looking for. We're looking to support you so that you are stronger. And so we discuss how all the issues are the same and the dramas are different. And Dr. Emoto, he's just recently deceased, I'm very sad to hear that. He says, I love his work just for this photo. Because this photo confirmed archetypal shamanic medicine. Because he took water crystals and he prayed over them and he brought and took pictures of before and after. And he, he showed us what I'm talking about right now, that you can change it because your body is a crystal and you have the ability from an alchemical uh, imaging to change it. And if we don't even have to take a workshop. We can just start doing that right now. It's breath, it's color, it's image. It's breath, it's color, it's image. And the challenge that we have in, in, in alternate healing, which is a profound amount of emphasis that I'm aware of, and they do a lot of work in this area, um, where around releasing. But there is not very much work or emphasis put on the imprint. So if you have an emotional release, you need to what? <coughs> imprint. So if you let go of something, then you want to breathe in a color or breathe in an image if you have intuitive wisdom on board to imprint. And when you imprint it, that's when you ask yourself what? How does this feel? You don't decide in your head because your head has no concept of what your experience is, although it is continually attempting to tell you that it does. Okay, so your head works for your heart. Okay, your head needs to know that I'm having a feeling, but it's very important that you start to recognize that your true um, connection to creation, whatever that is for you, it's not rocket science. But it is a science. It's to recognize, as I let go, I must imprint. As I let go, I must imprint. This is the law of resonance. If I am imprinting with the moon, if I am imprinting with the sun king, then I am going to that original intention, that original energy. It does not matter if your head knows what's going on. What matters is, is your heart opening to the blessing and to the teaching. You know, what is true abundance? True abundance is to receive the blessing and to allow yourself to change 
And that is the evolution that we are in. It's too late because we are actually evolving and we are actually raising our vibrational expression. And so we can participate in a friendly manner with the universe. Good idea, don't you think? Right? Or we can keep thinking we're in charge, right? <laughs> and go against the energy. And again, the challenge that we have when we go against the energy is we make it more difficult. So my question to you today, because I love you, is are you imprinting with the archetype or with the collective karma? Every time you tell yourself something negative, what are you doing? You're making a choice to imprint in a negative way that may or may not what? Help you. If you can't help yourself because you're just spinning out in negative thoughts, does that ever happen to anybody here? Right? This is what you do. Om, om, going to work, om, om, I'm not big enough to have thoughts today. Om, <laughs> om, right? And then you know, and you breathe, and you bring in the color, and you keep breathing it out your tummy. You should put your hands on your tummy for me right now, because the tummy is actually the womb, and it's the place of the sacred feminine, and it's where all your power is. But if you've got it all twisted with karma and unresolved emotions and feelings, then, you know, you're in labor for a while, <laughs> right? So ultimately, we're giving birth to who? Us. Every day. Yeah, you just love that part, don't you? Yes, we love that we're giving birth to ourselves every day, because she says, give me a yes. 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 Excellent. Let me hear it again. Yes. yes. Okay, one more time. Yes. yes. There we go. We want the yes, right? You know, because in the yes, I'm growing and learning it. Yes. I'm going to become who I'm supposed to be. And yes, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to breathe. And yes, I'm breathing in a color because Kashida told me to. Right? <laughs> and yes. But you hear that? Yes. Is there any hesitation? No. no. Right? <laughs> but that's the point. But if, you, you know, when we talk about the point of conception, remember that point of conception? I might be growing. I might be changing. Right? I might become alternative. Might not, right? Like, what are you doing? You're spinning out. So again, in my tradition, my grandmother taught me, yeah, I'm either doing it or I'm not doing it. Right? There's, there's no, no there's no in between. And that, my friends, is the science of energy medicine. You know, you make a mistake that you think is a mistake, no no harm, no foul, then what do you need to do? You choose. You chose that one, okay. Didn't work like work out, but you can what? You and what does that, what, does, what happens there? You begin to understand what truth actually feels like. Do you understand truth? We never said that. We said we want you to learn how to what? To feel it. And that's why you're here. You're here to feel, to grow, but you know all of you. Or you wouldn't be here what it feels like. If you feel that you have felt truth in your life, put up your hands. So keep breathing. Keep letting go. Keep not thinking you're bad or wrong. Make the choice to receive the blessing, to bring in color, to bring in archetypes that you relate to. Don't relate, if you don't like mine, find your own. Archetypal wisdom is a science. And you need to find the archetypes that you resonate with from your culture, from your teachings, in the way that is right for you. But as you allow yourself to open to that energy, you open up to a world that is profoundly amazing, creative, you know, creative, um, honoring, and respectful, and you find yourself in rhythm with the Earth Mother's consciousness in the natural world. And that's a whole world. We, as two ladies, we don't really even acknowledge it exists. And so a part of the work that I'm doing at this point in time is to support people in archetypal shamanic medicine because I really want you to be able to hear the earth and to hear the unseen worlds of our earth mother because it's not one big blob. You're not like one big two-legged. You know, we talk about the two-legged. There's a gazillion little two-leggeds in this room today, right? And so it's not one big earth. You know, it is the stone people. It is the water. You look at water, there's the wells, there's the streams, there's the oceans, there's the rivers, there's the lakes. Just getting started. Right? <laughs> but you kind of see where I'm going here, right? There's marshes, there's swamps, right? There's like a whole family of water. And all of the water has different teaching and different blessings and the 
water right now, because we're so connected to the water, is actually what? Kind of important. And so again, as we honor the archetypal shamanic energy medicine, as we begin to breathe in color, as we begin to acknowledge that we're not our feelings, as we begin to open ourselves to establishing new belief systems, and we open ourselves always to the highest of highs, that we honor the emotional body as the sacred feminine. Yay! And we honor that the mental body is the sacred masculine. Yay! And we honor that not one is not more important than another. That establishing a strong mental body based on medicine and truth and teachings is a very good idea because when you don't know how you're feeling, that's when you make the choice to hang on to what we call the teaching. And so this, again, is about learning to imprint and connect to the earth, the fire, the water, and the air, to breathe into color, to remember our original intention, to recognize that in the shamanic tradition that the moon, the water, and the earth are, are represent the sacred feminine, if you're looking for archetypes to imprint, that the sacred masculine is the sun and the fire and the air. All through the summer, I wake up every morning and I wake up to the sun and I bring the sun king's energy all summer long, even in the winter, into my body to warm myself, to feel loved, to feel supported, because I don't have a strong masculine relationship other than my brothers in my life at this time. But when I wake up to the sun king every day, he's there for me. And you know, he doesn't have a toothbrush, so you know, it's kind of working for me. <laughs> okay. So this takes us again to what we call the golden mean. Um, this is the vesica Pisces. And that is when, you know, the place, it's, 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 it's archetype, uh, it's, it's pie and math, it's, it's, um, archetype, um, it's architecture language when we talk about the golden mean, but essentially it's when that sacred masculine and that sacred feminine actually make that marriage. And then we are neither one nor the other, we are even more. And that again, from a thick geometry perspective. And then we have, again, the maiden mother, the priestess, the stag prince, the merlin, the sun king, and so there's different stages. Just sort of giving you a little something else to think about. Um, and we say that this is the creation story of the earth tribe, that it is your story, it is our story, it is my story. Our sustainability comes from honoring and respecting the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine, taking responsibility, and re-choosing energetic alignments of the original intention. So we have the blessing, the choice, and we ask you to choose to bring in the blessing. So I'm going to take questions for one second, but we're just going to take one big breath, and you're going to take what I gave you, and you're going to give it away. I don't need to fully understand it, because I'm going to trust her that if I need, well, everything's going to come back to me. Now you're going to reach up, and you're going to bring it in, and we're going to bring it down, and we're just going to breathe in now both the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine. So when, as you close your eyes now, you're going to breathe in the whiter than white light of the moon, and the brightness of the great sun came. And as you take deep inhalations now, as we draw that in, say to yourself, I am open, I am willing, and I am worthy of receiving. I ask for divine protection, divine guidance, and divine intervention. As you breathe deeply now, you draw those energies into your head, your neck, your shoulders, your arms, your hands and fingertips, the upper and lower back, the chest, the stomach, the abdomen, into the thighs, the knees, the limbs, the feet, out through the bottoms of your feet, and into the center of the earth, right here, right now, so be it. And as you do it again, as you breathe the energy back up from your feet, feel your feet like the roots of the tree, as you breathe that gold and that white, and you draw that back up and out through the top of your head and back to the source. And now we open our crown chakras wider than they've ever been open before. And we breathe in now integration. We breathe in gratitude. And we bring in only the highest of highs as once more again you breathe that beautiful white and gold into your head. As it comes into your head, Allow it to come into the hat. Allow it to fill your brain with new understandings that 
you have no concept of in this moment in time. So breathe in that white, in that gold. And as you draw that into your head, bigger breaths, your neck, as it comes into your throat, just tell yourself it's okay to express. It's okay to talk. It's okay to express. It's okay for me to find my expression, whatever that is for me. And with deep inhalations, you keep drawing it now into your arms, your hands and fingertips, the upper and lower back and spine, the chest, the stomach, the abdomen, into the thighs, the knees, the limbs, the feet, out through the bottoms of our feet, and into the center of the earth. And with me now, let us close with three old.